guys, it's Archul Mano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. It is hot in London today. Hot, hot, hot. So if I sweat profusely, profusely, you will understand why. I'm melting like a s snow cone in Phoenix. Yeah, I stole that from friends. Anyway, today I'm reviewing Putan des Palaces. Palace or palaces? Anyway, it means pal palace whore or whore of the palace. Um, and this is Atali Uh I This was the first fragrance from Atali Boudorange that piqued my interest in the brand. Obviously they have quite provocative names, a lot of them have a sexual undertone. And this one's just right out there, I mean in your face. A lot of them have a play on words, but this one is full on palace whore. I've wanted to review it for a really long time, um, and now I'm gonna. So, yay for us. So this is a floral fragrance that came out in 2006, and this is the third fragrance I've smelled from Etali Boudorange that is a nod to something vintage-y without being full-on vintage. It's kind of their way of portraying a vintage fragrance. The first one was Bijou Romantique, which I have reviewed. It was a classic amber, a lot like Shalimar. The other one is Je suis un homme, which is their tribute to Napoleon. It's a kind of classic men's citrus cologne. This one is the third one that I've smelled, and I can start by saying that this is definitely the prettiest fragrance I've smelled from Atali Boudorange, because we all know they can go weird, wacky, wonderful, crazy. Anyway, let me tell you the notes. So the notes are Rose Absolute, Violet, Lily, uh, I've got it here, so I'm just checking, I'm just looking. Rose Absolute, Violet, Leather, which is Atali Boudorange's signature. It's in 90% of their fragrances. Leather's a bit naughty, isn't it? That's kind of their way of portraying it as well, a bit of naughtiness. Uh, Lily of the Valley, Tangerine, Ginger, Rice Powder, Amber, and Animalic Notes. So, what does it smell like? So, the inspiration behind this, just as I'm spraying, is... To me, it's all about courtesans, you know, French ladies of the night, but the really high class ones. And this fragrance is really, really beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's probably the most beautiful one I smell from them, for sure. This, the main things I smell in here are a violet and rose combination with a rice powder, which kind of translates as face powder to me. It feels to me like one of those fragrances that the French design to be worn in between shower and bedtime, like one of those fragrances that you wear with lingerie. Usually they come in eau de cologne concentration, usually they're in really big bottles so you can lavish yourself. It feels like one of those. It's quite a quiet and sultry powdery fragrance and it feels like it's kind of in the realm of Kenzo flower but much more refined. Uh, much more detailed, a little bit more complex, because Kenzo Flower is, while being a rose violet powdery fragrance, it's kind of one noted, I think, on purpose. This is a lot more complex and definitely a lot more beautiful. I can feel the leather in there, but it doesn't feel like the typical Atali Boudorange leather, which can be like full on leather jacket or an animalic kind of leather. This one feels a little bit more like a suede type texture of leather, mingled in there with a gorgeous rose-violet combination and this powder that all contribute to it being powdery. It is a powdery floral that feels like a nod to vintage. It's very, very beautiful, for sure. It's meant to be about lipstick, it's meant to be about ladies of the night, it's meant to be a little bit naughty, but I feel like it's friendly. If this had a more animalic and a little bit more of a kind of harsher leather, then I'd say it was a bit naughty. But this is definitely a pretty fragrance beyond belief. It's definitely would have been in my top 10 powdery videos if I did a niche one, which I probably will now and put this one in it because this is one of the most beautiful powdery niche fragrances I've smelled for sure. Mmm, there's something crisp in the core. Not crisp, but there's something that's giving it a little bit of bite in the core, so it's not baby balm, it's not full-on powder. It's definitely powdery, but there's enough character in the heart of this that feels really nice. Maybe it's the ginger that's giving it just that little bit of spark to stop it being full-on powder puff, so it does have character. It's really cool in that way, I love it. I don't get a super transformation from this either, other than it kind of softens a little bit more on dry down. But overall, 
it's not a loud shouting fragrance and I don't think it was designed to be like that. It's more of a wafter. I say that quite a lot about fragrances. It's, it's a wafty wafterson sort of fragrance. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit of a come hither, but I do feel like it's versatile. I really like this one. Longevity, I get about five hours out of it at full pelt, which isn't the best, but again, I do feel like, having said it's versatile, I do feel like it's a kind of boudoir-y type thing. It is a little bit lingerie-like, and I think that's the design. I don't think this is meant to be, you know, going out in your best black dress sort of fragrance. I think it's more just when you want to feel ultra feminine and subtle and, you know, a bit dainty and quiet. So that's it. That's what I'm going to say about it. Putan des Palaces. Palace or palaces. I'm not sure. Anyway, if you guys want to get this fragrance, head on over to natino.co.uk. I'll post a link below. Uh, they sell it there. And I'm actually on my note. Click my logo to subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon for another video. Goodbye.